Dispatch to 44. 44, go ahead. Respond to the 400 block of Early Road. Report of a crash involving a motorcycle. 44, copy. On my way. When you experience death like I have, you see that God's not there. Tell me, Pastor, why does God let bad things happen to good people? Why is God silent? Do you really think that God, the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it, is silent? Do you really think he's just ignoring all of us down here? Maybe he's talking, Jonathan, and you're just not listening. I wonder what you'd say if you saw the things I've seen. My dad was my best friend, and my best memories of him were on that lake, doing what we loved. You know, I remember one time we, we went deep sea fishing and I put a bass line in, looking for sea bass. All of a sudden, my line just took off. Something big got. I finally pulled him up to the top and it was huge. And the three of us pulled that thing up over the side and got it on the deck of the boat. It was 105 pounds and it was five foot long. Five foot? So what do you think for your next birthday if we take you deep sea fishing? For real? For real. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I can't think of a better way to celebrate your next birthday than to take you deep sea fishing. I didn't realize it then, but that was my last good memory of my dad. I can remember the day she told us. As a kid, you never fully understand. Daddy's really sick. And uh, Jesus is going to take him to heaven soon. Soon. Mom's gonna need you to be strong. Okay? Who's gonna take me fishing in the ocean? Oh, I'm sorry, Jonathan. I won't be able to take you to the ocean. It's almost my time. I'm sorry. Oh. 
I still regret not spending more time with him. I regret not talking to him more. That was the day I realized God didn't care about me. God didn't care about any of us. Even if he was real, why wouldn't he listen to a child? Daddy died. We prayed for him. Who's gonna take care of you? Who's gonna take care of me? I'm sorry, son. I'm sorry. No, you're not. You don't understand. Jonathan, wait, please. Jonathan! Jonathan! Eight years later, I was training to become an officer. Let's go, Jonathan, move it! Come on! Come on, get him out of there! Come on, move, move, hey! Jonathan, why do you want to be a cop? I want to make a difference, sir. I want to be a better man, sir. Yep. Ah. We'll see about that. Put your hands on the ground. Welcome to the force. Congratulations, Hickory. You made it. Thank you, sir. Proud of you. I think I did that great. <laughs> I'm sure you did better than what you think, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, you're smart. You know what you're doing. I'm sure you're going to figure out a way to get in there, right? Yeah. yeah. I guess that's why you're looking at the new officer, Hickory. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Uh... Hey, put this on, strap up. <laughs> you ready? Stacy, did I ever tell you the story of the most beautiful girl in the world? No. Once upon a time, there was a girl so beautiful, she lit up every room she walked into. She was confident, with piercing, bluish, greenish eyes that always changed colors, and radiant blonde hair that shined like the morning sun. Now, you might be wondering whatever happened to the most beautiful girl in the world. Well. 
She met some lucky chump and gave him her number on a napkin with a note that said, don't lose this. I didn't. Stacy. Badly. They say in life we only fall in love three times. But I've been falling in love with you 365 days a year for the last three years of my life. And if you promise not to lose this, I plan on falling in love with you over and over and over again for the rest of my life. So will the most beautiful girl in the world marry me? I'm so happy for you. <gasps> oh, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <sighs> Stacy was the best thing that ever happened to me. She's the reason I'm here today. She's the love of my life. I really don't deserve her. She sounds like an amazing woman. She is. What happened to that happy couple? When did things go wrong? On my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. I will always uphold the Constitution, the community, and the agency I serve, so help me God. Sir. Steve Watson, field training officer. It's nice to meet you. You ready? Uh, yeah. Let's go. So I read your file. Looked like you were top of your class. But trust me, there is no training that can prepare you for the streets. Now look, I know you just got married and you're all excited. I get it. But you gotta get your head out of the clouds, son. These streets are tough. If you aren't sharp and focused, these streets will eat you alive and it will get you killed. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Look, I'm here to learn. You won't have to worry about me. Let's get this straight. I run a tight ship. You do it by the book. If you're going to get trained by me, you do what I say when I say it. If you hesitate, it could cost you your life. Now fix your collar. You're a professional and you need to look like one. But you're fun at parties. No, I am not fun. Now get in the car. So we getting some donuts or what? No rule. If you have something stupid to say, don't. Yes, sir. Dispatch to unit 71. Is this us? 71, go ahead. Respond to the area of Riggs Salvage Yard in the 900 block of Burnley Road for the report of shots fired. A caller stated at least two males armed with assault rifles, multiple shots heard. No further description. Seven one on location. Sit on. Huh? So what's the plan? Keep your head on a swivel. We don't know what we're walking into. Is your pack a tourniquet? What? 
You should. Base, shots fired. Hope they showed you how to use that thing. Shot him. I know. I almost shot him. I know. But you didn't. You know why? You used your brain. Good instincts, son. Good instincts. Come on. I got a couple cold ones if you just let me go. I don't drink on the job, man. Come on, watch your head. Hey, hey, hey. You did a good job today. All right? Thanks. Hi. Hey, baby, how are you? I'm good. I'm just grading papers. Yeah. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's going fine. It's a slow night. Pretty boring, actually. Well, I miss you. I miss you, too. I just wanted to call and hear your voice and tell you I love you. I love you, too. Yeah. Well, look, um, I gotta go, so don't wait up for me, okay? Good night. I love you. Sorry about that. Hey, man. It's all right. Listen, we did the right thing over there. We need to bring this world into our homes. Our families don't need to know what's going on out here. Any available unit, respond code 3 to Shinston Let's Road go. at the interstate overpass for the report of a motor vehicle crash with entrapment and injury. Reported a vehicle down an embankment on its side. Witnesses reporting vehicles appear to be racing before the crash. Unknown if any other vehicles are involved at this time. Check that vehicle, I'll check this. I'm full. Cool. This bastard slips here, it's 1180. Put a rush on that bus. Hey, police, they're right there. 10 more unit 44. Sydney. She was 16. Sydney would never get to fall in love. She would never get married. 
never experienced motherhood. All her hopes, dreams, gone. Her entire life flashed before my eyes. someone dead like that before. Look, police work isn't easy. See a lot of crazy things out there. But let me tell you something, off the record. I found one thing that helps me get through all of this. What's that? Couldn't do this job without Jesus. Really? Yeah. Here, yeah. take this. That's our church. You should stop by sometime. All right, come on, let's go. Death notifications. This is the hardest part of my job. I have no idea, huh? No idea whatsoever. What are you doing? Reading the Bible. Why? Helps me. How do you tell a mother her child just died? <laughs> Hey, Rook. Here's a drink for you. Who are you? I'm Thomas. Jonathan, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Thank you. I heard uh, you ran into some of West Virginia's finest today. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it. Yeah, I don't know how you guys do this, man. Hey, look, kid. After a while, you get used to it. Yeah, some days you're out there doing paperwork for eight hours, and the next day you're getting shot at. <laughs> Where's Watson? Oh, guy's a square. Doesn't drink at all. He'll never step foot in here. We heard about the girl. How are you handling that? I mean, I've never experienced something like that before in my life. It is what it is. Hey, guys, to the rookie. To the rookie. Get that glass up here, kid. To the rookie. Thank you. It'll get easier. Sooner or later, you'll feel a thing. You have a good night. Be safe. Thanks for riding. Oh. Stink. Mm, right? 
been? Um, you know, the guys, they wanted to celebrate the rookie's first day. Couldn't say no. So how was the rookie's first day? It was different. My FTO was a nice guy. I met him for the first time today. We had donuts and joked around. Good. Right, we'll get some rest. I'll catch up with you, okay? Mm -hmm. I love you. I love you, too. husband. Lord, Jonathan is a good man, but I think this job is more than he expected. I think that he sees things that he can't talk to anybody about. I sense that it's hurting him, it's changing him. I feel like he's feeling hopeless, and he needs you, God. I know that God can help him, and that through the power of Jesus that I can get my husband back. Amen. Hey, Jonathan, come on in. Lieutenant. Good to see you. It's great to see you. Please have a seat. So I've been talking to your FTO. He tells me you have some talent. Just doing my job, sir. Well, that's certainly good to hear. Apparently, you're doing it really well. We're thinking about moving you up. How do you feel about the traffic safety unit? You pulling my leg? No, I am not. As part of that, you get a motorcycle and an unmarked car. Congratulations, son. Wow. This, uh, it's, it's an honor, sir. Thank you so much. Well, you know what? You've earned it. Just don't make me regret it. <laughs> I'll do right. my best. All right. Look at that. Nice. Yeah, and we can afford that, but they can't upgrade my crappy cruiser. I know. Kills me. Wow. Who's the lucky chump? No idea. Certainly isn't you, Hickory. Oh, no way. There is no way on no God's way. green earth they are trusting that to you. Hey, were you able to find a big enough helmet to go over that head of yours? Don't be mad they don't make these for senior citizens, Rodriguez. Oh, oh, that's cold, dude. What was that? That is cold, bro. 
That's cold. One more time. That I, is cold. I, I can't hear you. That's cold, bro. <laughs> man, I can't believe he's got that ride. Yeah, man. Dispatch unit 44. 44, go ahead. 44, respond code 3 to the intersection of 2nd Street and Maple Avenue. We have a report of a single vehicle overturned, multiple occupants, possibly children in the vehicle, unknown injury. Fire and rescue are responding. 44, 10, 4. That bed, huh? Whole family. It was horrible. What can I say, kid? It's part of the job. Someone's got to do it.
Mrs. Hickory, where is she? Excuse me, is everything okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking for my wife. Oh, uh, third door on the left. Great, great. All right, walking feet! Are you okay, sweetie? So, can anybody tell me what this is? Drop out of her. Good job. And how about this? Funnel. Funnel, good job. And what about this? <gasps> good job. We're having a baby? We're having a baby? Oh, I'm gonna be a dad! Let her sleep. You got her? Yeah. Come here. And you know her sleep schedule? Yep. And you know she gets fed in 20 minutes, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, come here. Are you sure you need me? No, we're fine. Are you go sure? Ahead. I gotta get out of here. Okay, and you're gonna call me, right?
drunk driving is still the number one cause of death on our roadways. Two out of three people will be impacted by a drunk driving crash in their lifetime, which is why we take this award very seriously. It is reserved for an officer, an exceptional officer, who has gone above and beyond to keep our streets safe. He is a shining example of someone who is making our community a better place. It is my honor to present this award to Officer Jonathan Hickory. Jonathan, you reek of alcohol. Wow. Thank you, everyone. It is an honor and a pleasure to stand here before you all. Family comes first in our lives. And with another baby on the way, we know just how important it is to keep our streets safe. I unfortunately know better than most the horrific, tragic effects of drunk driving. It's heartbreaking, to say the least. The effects of drunk driving aren't just limited to those in the impact, but to our family members, our friends, our kids. Thank you. Dispatch to 44. 44, go ahead. Respond to the 400 block of Early Road, report of a crash involving a motorcycle. 44, copy. I'm on my way. Me. Oh, hey, man, took you long enough. I actually do have something for you. Here, this is wallet. Whose wallet? The guy on the motorcycle, he's over there. Oh, man. What? I know this guy. I went to high school with him. Uh, where did you say? Right over there, on that white sheet. Thanks. Sorry, man.
I couldn't understand why they weren't angry. I looked into the eyes of that family, and all I saw was sadness. Pure sadness, no anger, no resentment. They just missed their kid. They should be angry at the drunk who killed him. They should hate him. But they couldn't. They were calm and peaceful, and that infuriated me. Here's this drunk who just took the life of their loved one over some stupid bottle of liquor, and they just forgave him, just like that. If there's one thing I know, it's that we're all gonna end up dead with no hope anyway. What's the point in this life? What difference does it make and who cares? I don't understand. Where was Jesus when that guy swerved through three lanes and killed Daniel? Jonathan, Jesus didn't kill Daniel. Why don't you blame Satan? Oh, God. Come on, Satan. Oh, so it's okay to blame Jesus for everything, but not Satan. Not the one that the Bible tells us comes to, to steal, kill, and destroy. He gets no credit. That family had peace because they know Jesus. Because they know there's more to this life. Because this life is not perfect. It's broken. We broke it. Sin broke it. I'm having a really hard time buying that. Oh, well, if you got it all figured out, then what are we doing here? I don't know. Why did you want to talk? You want help? I'm trying to help you. You wouldn't understand. Then make me understand. It was Sunday, October 20th. My wife was in her 20th week. That's the baby.
At 14 weeks, the brain impulses in an unborn baby begin to fire. At 15 weeks, the unborn baby can sense light. At 19 weeks, the baby's senses are all developing. Touch, taste, vision, smell, and hearing. Christian was 20 weeks old. Look, you are not alone, all right? You should come to church with us.
pray for my husband. He's a good man. I know deep down he's a good man. But he needs you. He needs your help. He's still the man that I love. He's my Jonah. And he's lost at sea. He needs you. This is my last prayer, God. And I don't know how. But he needs your help. We need your help for our family, for me, for Anna, for Jonathan. I need you to bring him back to me. Please help. Let me call you back. Jonathan, come in. These detectives are from Internal Affairs. Have a seat. Can I ask what this is all about? I think you know why they're here. You're under investigation for violating our code of conduct. You'd better hope we don't find out you're involved in immoral conduct. You are to hand over your departmental laptop and cell phones, along with all the lock codes and passwords. And you will not discuss this investigation with anyone. Is that clear? You're dismissed. This is the story of Jonah. Jonah was a good man, but he was scared. What did he do, Mommy? Jonah didn't know that God had a purpose for him, that God had a special mission for him. And God found a way to get his attention. God sent a storm. And he sent a big fish to go and get Jonah and bring him back. And in the end, Jonah did the right thing. He did God's special mission. And he came back. He did the right thing.
What's the point of this life? What difference does it make? revolves around the evil in this world. You see Satan's handiwork every day. That must be tough. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You've let him rob you of your peace. Of, of your family, of your life. It's time you fought back. You need the only one who has ever overcome this evil. about your affair, about your drinking, about the way you've been treating your family. There are consequences to your actions. Jesus is not going to change that. But Jesus will change you. All right, you want to be a man about this? You want to make things right? You want to fix it? First, you have to surrender yourself to Jesus. That's the first step. Honey, I realized I made a lot of mistakes. I know I haven't been good to you. I know I've been a disaster, but that's all going to change because last night I made a promise to God. I spoke to him for the first time and I promised him I'm going to be a better man, better father, better husband. I'm going to make it up to you, Anana. Stacy, what I'm asking is forgive me. Okay. I'm working on it. I'm going to be better. Okay. This one's for you, and this one's for me. Careful, you got it? Oh, wow. Say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, you do know that this is strange, right? You sitting here with us, getting ice cream, spending time with us. It's going to get better. Exactly. Well, she said. Jonathan, our family needs this. I know. I promise, things are going to change. Next time we're getting pizza, right? No. Ice cream. Ice cream again. Ice cream. 
Uh-huh. Is it good? <gasps> yeah. All right. Oh, I'm going to take this, okay? I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Lieutenant. Jonathan, I need to see you in my office. I have the results of your investigation. What flavor are you going to get next time? Vanilla. You didn't like this one? No. No. All right, all right I guess I'll see you then. Goodness gracious. Who was it? Oh, it was the lieutenant. Okay. Did he need you? No. Say no. You again. Well, at least this time you don't have your gun drawn. I need your help. Sure. What's going on? I'm an idiot. I take it you haven't told her. No, I haven't. You need to tell her, Jonathan. I can't tell her. She's going to leave and take Anna. I don't know what I would do if I lost them both. Well, if you don't tell her, you're going to lose them both anyway. I sense there's something else going on. Force the, uh... Found out about the affair. Did an entire investigation. I'm about to find out if I lost my job. I screwed up. Really, really screwed up. I could really use a prayer right now. I told you before, there are consequences to your actions. And praying won't make them go away but God promises to be there to help you through those consequences. I'm not asking for a miracle. I know there are consequences, but I also believe that God does answer prayers. Please, could you just, could you say a prayer with me? Of course. God, please help me keep my job. You know, being an officer in this county is a privilege. Oh, do you? We demand all of our officers be beyond reproach. All of them. And you, you don't. Yes, sir, I understand. I'm that. sorry, I believe I was still speaking. As for the charge, officer behaving in a scandalous, infamous manner in violation of West Virginia code. For that, you're guilty. Dismissal without pension, without severance. Nothing. That's the verdict. job is all I know, sir. It's my passion. It's what I'm good at. It's the only thing I'm good at. I didn't come here to make excuses, but we both know that this line of work gets inside your head. 
and between the things I've seen on the job and, and losing my son, I've been a wreck. I've been avoiding my problems. And this, this job is, being here, it's the only thing that makes me feel like I'm making a difference. I know I need to be held accountable for my actions and I, I don't deserve this job. I don't deserve my family. But I want you to know that I'm working on it and I'm going to be a better man. Look, Jonathan, I know you, okay? I know this isn't like you. Look at me. You know, I'm actually willing to bet my badge on you. You know why? Because at the end of the day, I think you're a good cop. And I truly believe everyone deserves a second chance. That's why I fought for you. And guess what? That's why I got him to keep you on the force. Thank you. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't thank me yet. Oh, no, you will be disciplined. You will no longer be a motorcycle or traffic officer. And that take-home vehicle, yeah, that's gone. You will immediately be sent to the Uniform Patrol Division on a midnight shift, pushing a cruiser. Now, give me the keys to the uh, motorcycle and the unmarked. Look, Jonathan, I am taking a huge risk on you. You understand that? Huge. Tell me I'm not making a mistake. I won't let you down, sir. These are the keys to your new ride, car 305. You proved to me that you can change, and in a year, maybe we can reevaluate your performance. Don't make me regret this. You're dismissed. So, um, what's with the squad car out there? I got put back on nights. Start tomorrow night. What? Yeah, I got some trouble at work. They swapped me over to the midnight shift. Jonathan, how? I mean, you've been, you've been working so hard. What happened? Yeah, there was a vehicle pursuit a few months ago. Remember the one I was telling you about? Yes. And? And? I gave the suspect a break. Didn't write him up. Turns out they had warrants. So, look, I think I like this better anyways. I won't have to deal with seeing the wrecks and who knows, maybe this is a good thing. A good thing. Jonathan, how is this gonna be a good thing? You're never gonna see us. Look, it's only for a while, okay? We'll make it work. Yeah, I guess. I love you. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. Okay? Respond code three to Rocco's liquor store, one two six zero East Main Street for the possible carjacking. Caller stating they saw a large male with a beard forcing his way into a black van in the parking lot. Before any backup. Copy unit 44. We have backup on the way. Any available units respond to code 3.
Hi, Megan. Hi, Anna. What's going on? I'm taking Anna to get some ice cream. We'll be right back. Oh, okay. Hey, what are you doing here? Get in the car, Jonathan. What's going on? Just get in the car now. to me. You are not the man that I married, and I want him back. Yes. You broke us. You broke me. What happened? No, because you're not sorry. No, don't. don't. Stacy, you should know that the day that Jonathan came to see me, he, he told me all about the demons he was fighting. He told me about the infidelity. He also told me that you are the love of his life and he didn't feel like he deserved you. This is one of the most difficult things that could ever happen in a marriage. Jonathan, it took you years to break this marriage. It's gonna take you a long time to repair it. And you're gonna have to ask yourself the hardest questions. Do you want to fix this? Do you wanna move forward to forgiving? You're gonna have to look deep within your heart and you're gonna have to decide, is this family worth fighting for. It's gonna be a long journey. But if you turn toward God, I think you have a chance.
<laughs> there are consequences to your actions, and Jesus will not change that. But Jesus will change you. All right, you want to be a man about this? You want to make things right? You want to fix it? First, you have to surrender yourself to Jesus. That's the first step. slave to you for way too long. I am sick and tired of you controlling me. God, God, please give me the strength to break free from these chains. done to Stacy, to my family, to Anna. And the weight of all this is overwhelming and I'm having a lot of trouble dealing with it. Jonathan, that burden is not for you to carry. That weight on your shoulders is for Jesus to carry. You have to give it to him or it'll crush you. I just want my wife to love me again. It's gonna take time. I can do that for you. Don't touch me. Stay away from me. It's not going to be easy. You have to push through. You have to believe there's hope. She believed for years that you would turn around. Now it's your turn to believe in her. Forgive me for what I've done. Help heal our wounds. Help me fix this mess I made. Please. you for a second, sweetheart. Whoa, come here. You know your daddy loves you very much, right? Very, very, very much. 
look, I know daddy's been mean a lot lately, and that's not your fault, okay? I want you to know that daddy promises to never be mean to you ever again, okay? I love you, sweetheart. I'm sorry. Could you forgive me? Okay. Well, before we can make any changes together as a couple, Jonathan, you're gonna have to face some things. Now, I know you have a lot of hurt from the loss of your father. So I want you to try something. We are going to try an exercise. I want you to pretend your father is sitting in this chair. <laughs> you want me to play pretend with that chair? Jonathan, we're gonna to have to work on you before we can work on restoring your marriage. Now I want you to speak to this chair as if your father is sitting in it right here in front of you. I want you to say all the things you wanted to say to him. Dad. Dad. Dad, you were my best friend. You were my hero. I miss you. I wish you were here. I wish you were here to see me graduate the academy, become a police officer. I wish you were here to see me marry Stacy and meet your granddaughter, Anna. She's just like you, smart, funny. I want to tell you that I love you because I feel like I, I, I didn't have enough time to tell you. It's not fair. I never heard the words, good job, son. I miss you, son. You're a good son. I couldn't say the word, dad. I just want to tell you I love you because I feel like I didn't get to tell you enough. I feel like God took you away from me. I feel like a piece of my heart is missing and I'm never going to get it back.
This one's cute. Mm-hmm. I like her shoes. Yeah. Hey, who wants to play a game? Me. You both do? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anna, you're first. What's it say? I am soft and I help you sleep. <gasps> That's a tough one. What do you think would help mom and dad sleep? A blanket. Well, where do you keep blankets? The bedroom. I have one for you too. Daddy, I found it. it was under the pillow. You did? What'd you get? A princess crown. Wow, what a beautiful crown. Beautiful crown for a beautiful princess. Ah. And I got a clue too. What is it? Something waits for you in a safe place. What do you think? I don't know. Could it be in the safe? Maybe. Only one way to find out, right? What'd you get? 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 Hmm. We're having another baby. We're having a 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 baby. Oh, we're having a baby. <laughs> wow. Get ready to learn how to share. <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. Let's take a group family picture. Okay, sweetie. Yes. Let's get your hair. Grandma likes your hair. You're so beautiful, you know that. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. You had faith. You held on. I love you. You're my heart. I'm just so happy to have you back. I love you. Anna, get over here. Hey, everybody ready? Ready, come on. All right, make it a good one. All right, guys, say cheese. Cheese. <laughs> I wish I could feel it all feel If I could, I would take back all that you've been through And I would find a safer place for you to rest When you've come undone I wish I could take the pain away If I could, I would paint for you a brand new day